In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have witnessed in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days at Gibeon, the Lord said to Solomon in a dream by night, and the Lord said, what I shall give you. And Solomon said, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. 
I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Lord, how I love your Lord. My part I have resolved, O Lord, is to obey your word. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Lord, how I love your Lord. Let your love be ready to console me by the promise to your servant. Let your love come to me and I shall live, for your law is my delight. <coughs> That is why I love your commands more than finest gold. That is why I rule my life by your precepts. I hate false ways. Lord, how I love your Lord. Your will is wonderful indeed, therefore I obey it. The unfolding of your word gives light and teaches the simple. Lord, how I love your Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net which was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it to ashore and sat down and sorted the good into vessels, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Undoubtedly, the central theme in the Gospel of St. Matthew is the proclamation of the Kingdom of Heaven. The term is used more than 30 times in St. Matthew's Gospel, and its proclamation is attributed to John the Baptist, our Lord, most notably of all, and then subsequently the Apostles. Both the frequency of citation, as well as the authority of those using the term, point to its great importance. And today's gospel picks up the theme of the kingdom of heaven and develops our understanding of it in a number of ways. We can take the comparison made between the kingdom of heaven and treasure in the first parable. The kingdom of heaven, we're told, is in some way like treasure, treasure which is hidden, presumably buried in a field. Now, treasure's two most obvious characteristics are its value and its physicality. If we take the physicality first, then treasure, whatever it may be, gold, silver, diamonds, whatever, will be physical stuff of some kind or other. So if treasure is physical stuff and the kingdom of heaven is in some way like treasure, then the kingdom of heaven will also in some way be physical. Now that might surprise us a little bit because we might expect the kingdom of heaven to be a purely spiritual phenomenon. And whilst the kingdom of heaven certainly involves a spiritual di dimension, further reflection shows it cannot be exclusively spiritual. In some way, the kingdom of heaven must be physical because human beings are physical and our bodies occupy places. Hence, if human beings are to be part of the kingdom of heaven, then it will in some sense have to be as well. And in effect, the parable is talking about the coming or telling us that the coming of the kingdom of heaven brings about the transformation So much for treasure's physicality next to its value. Treasure, whatever else it may be, is worth having. It's worth seeking out precisely because of its value. 
Lots of people, even in this day and age, like to look for treasure. You'll find treasure hunters waving their metal detectors around most fields on most mornings, and some even go to greater extremes. So if the kingdom of heaven is like treasure, and treasure is worth seeking out, then the kingdom of heaven will also be worth seeking out. However, the kingdom of heaven isn't just any old treasure. It's not a mere Roman coin to get excited about. It's a treasure so valuable that it's worth selling everything one owns in order to pursue it. Fair enough, but how do we pursue it? Well, in a further parable, the kingdom of heaven is compared to a net cast into the sea, which is then hauled ashore. Now, the net parable fits well with the treasure parable. The net is physical, and its catch, the fish, are valuable, just like treasure. But what the net parable adds to the picture is a certain dynamism. As the net is drawn from one part of the sea to another, so another part of creation comes under the influence of the kingdom of heaven. Does this dynamism mean that the kingdom of heaven is just a small thing limited to one time or one place? Not at all. Rather, it is being realized here and now in our midst and is gradually expanding. The kingdom's presence in one part of creation only excludes another in the sense that it hasn't arrived there yet. As each part of creation comes under the influence of the kingdom of heaven, it's changed forever. What this dynamism does suggest, though, is that we need to grab hold of the kingdom of heaven while we have the chance. Once the opportunity is put before us, we should avail of it. Once we hear the apostolic preaching, we would be wise to respond to it. We can't assume we'll have other chances in the future, so let's grab the opportunity while it's here before us. So the kingdom of heaven is valuable, physical, and dynamic. It began in the past when God first revealed himself to Israel. It achieved a decisive and complete victory when Christ became incarnate. And ever since then, it has been expanding across the world. It will be fully realized at the end of time when Christ returns in glory. In due course, we will all find our home in it. Let us pray today then for the coming of that kingdom. Let us stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together in faith, we offer our prayers to God our Father. For our Pope and bishops, as they work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations afflicted by poverty, famine, and injustice, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those working for a fair distribution of the food and resources of the earth, Lord, in your mercy, for our own efforts to choose the hidden treasure of personal faith and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who suffer in this time, especially those affected by the current pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. For the souls of the faithful departed. Lord, in your mercy. Let us now join our prayers to those of Our Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. God our Father, we offer you these prayers in faith and hope through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our Holy Father, Saint Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.